In today's video, I am going to be breaking down why Julius Randle won the Most Improved Player Award in the NBA this year. It wasn't just because of his scoring. Well, of course, it was because of what he did on the court, but he did a ton. Let's get down, let's check out why he became the Most Improved Player. Okay, so this first move is a very good power move. He has learned how to use his size to his advantage, and that's what we've seen this year. This is a very good move. This is something that we've seen Zion Williamson do a lot, and that is a jab cross right off of catching the pass. So here he does a quick jab towards his left foot, and then he dribbles the ball at the same time as he lifts that foot off. He's supposed to really lift up the foot at the same time as the ball bouncing on the ground but we're, we're gonna leave that it's close enough referees have a hard enough time as it is and that allows him to get past his defender so that he can attack that rim but really quick how many dribbles did he take that's the that's the first dribble technically second dribble and then he's able to attack that rim with a massive dunk now if he took three dribbles here that would have been way too many dribbles and he wouldn't have had that power to attack that rim with somebody trying to block his shot so this is also what I would like to teach you today is the fact that you want to take the fewest amount of dribbles possible when attacking the rim. He could have even had an even better time if he didn't do his second dribble and he could have skied up from here for a floater even so that he wouldn't even have a chance to get his shot or dunk blocked. We also see in this clip that he is in his ability to shoot the ball is a lot better this year. Here he's trying to create space using his elbows. He's able to do a step back and of course he's able to hit that three. Of course this was an and one. Mind you this is really good defense but this is something that you can do yourself as a player. You can swing this ball through, keep your elbows underneath the ball as soon as they're outside of the range of the ball you can get called for a foul and in the NBA these days with re uh, with reviews it could be an intentional foul it could cost you a couple of grand however if you can keep your elbows underneath that ball and not out to the sides or in front of the ball then you will be successful clearing that space because believe me nobody wants to have an elbow to the face you can do a quick push off that's not really a push off but a quick step back and then, of course, you can hit those three-point shots that way. You can even drive off of doing that too. See how his elbows are underneath that ball, clearing out that space? Right there, that first elbow, if it made contact, could have been an offensive foul, but he didn't make contact. But if you can keep those elbows underneath that ball, this is a safe play and will create a lot of space for you. So this next play is, of course, on a fast break. He's able to do a high gather across and then he's able to finish with that dunk. So why is this important? Well, he does a high gather up to his shoulder height, takes his two steps. That is very important. If you've got a player who's trying to reach in and you're, he's going this way and you're going towards the rim, get two hands on it, bring it up to your chest, stay strong, and then you can obviously finish with a layup or a dunk in this case. Now you don't have to have any fancy moves, but footwork is extremely important. If you have see yourself in a mismatch, you can take that mismatch down into the low post, and you can finish with an open shot. Now why is that an open shot? Well first off, he goes to try and back up. He does a quick dribble right at the end there, and then he's able to right left up into his shot. He kicks out that left leg, because he's left handed, so that he can get his left side in line with the basketball net. And of course, if he was a right-handed player here, he would have probably been blocked. But because he was a left-handed player, he never got blocked. And that this goes into my next point. Even though he is not a right-handed player, this is always good to know how to shoot off of both hands. Because of course, if you're shooting baseline, players are obviously going to try and block you on the right side. That's just the side that they're on. And if you could go up, even though you're right-handed, if you can go up with your left hand, you'll be very successful. This is why I think Kai Soto is going to be successful, because he can shoot with both hands around the basketball net. And then he's also able to use his size to his advantage. One dribble, shoulder into the chest of his defender, and then going up with two hands. See that? Shoulder, chest, two hands, going up with the ball until the last second where he releases with his left. This is a very good power move that you can do. Quick dribble, one dribble two steps, shoulder into the player, left hand, 
Very good move. These are some of the reasons why he won most improved. It's also good to know quick moves. Here it's a quick one dribble jab and then a quick step back off of that jab for a shot. You can do this as well. It's very simple and quick. You can get that defender back down onto his heels by a quick couple of jabs and then you can do a quick jab dribble right into him which makes him step back and that will create your space so that you can get that shot. I hope that this video helps you become a better basketball player. If it does, hit that like button, subscribe, go check out all of the equipment that I use down in the description below and I'll see you guys again next time.